This is Liz Colburn, host of The Morning Uplift. Thank you for listening to the following broadcast on Public Health Media. This is Bryce Burge, host of Your Soccer Passport here on Public House Media. After this episode, come join us on a trip around the soccer world as we discuss club and country every Tuesday. Stamp Your Soccer Passport by subscribing on Spotify, iTunes, or wherever you get your Public House Media podcasts. And thanks again for checking out the following broadcast on Public House Media. Hello, Let Me Be Forward family. How are we doing today? A new episode of Let Me Be Forward is here and ready for your consumption. Am I the only one that gets excited every time I hear the theme song? It's just such a cool song, honestly, and uh, I think it's kind of the theme of the season for Forward Madison. Won't Stop is the name of the song, but uh, we won't stop. We'll do what we need to do to keep fighting and keep climbing our way up the table. One win, one draw at a time. That means we have to go to Toronto and cost them their first non-win of the season at home. Man, we'll do it. We'll go out. We'll get that goal. Danny Tenorio going out and getting his first official goal for the Mingos in USL League One action. Yeah, baby. Get it, Danny. Way to go, man. We're proud of you, and we're excited for everything that he has done on his journey. Eric Leonard sits down with Madeline Cum uh, as they get a chance to have a conversation Exciting stuff to have him on the show. Daryl Shore is here this week. Andrew Schmidt, of course, the founder of The Flock, is also here. There's a lot to talk about on the episode this week. We're going to touch briefly on the Jeff Mashad news. I know some people have been asking about saying, do you know anything? What's going on? I'll get into that in just a few moments. We'll talk about a couple of new players being signed for Ford Madison on loan from Memphis 901. Big stuff for them also, so congrats to Ford Madison for bringing in a couple of new players. And I eat crow later on during the Loon Report uh, as I talk about Mason Toy and his one goal, one assist performance for Minnesota United as they beat down FC Cincinnati. So welcome into the show. I'm your host, Baxter Colburn. I appreciate you being here with me on this episode. A reminder, the show is out every Wednesday, presented by Public House Media. Check it out on your favorite podcast platform if you want to follow the show we are on social media at let me be forward or at let me be forward podcast on instagram twitter is the best way to get a hold of us and facebook just search for us i'm at baxter colburn and if you want to get in touch with my co-host maddie come search for her m-a-d-d-i-e-k-u-m-m on the social media channels with all that being said let's dive into the news and notes from around the soccer world Action in USL League One this past week saw some interesting results, starting with North Texas only beating FC Tucson on Tuesday night by a score of 1-0. to We talked about that on the show last week. Also, you had the uh, Friday games, of course, as we mentioned, uh, TFC2 and Madison tying at one apiece. You see Greenville beat Orlando City B by a score of 2-0. to And then you look towards the weekend, and it's Chattanooga getting another win, 1-0 over the Richmond Kickers, and North Texas beating Lansing Ignite after they had two big wins back-to-back. They beat them by a score of 3-1. Standings look a little bit different this week. Here's how they read from top to bottom. North Texas in first with 29 points, South Georgia with 25, Chattanooga in third with 21, Lansing in fourth with 20, TFC 2 with 19, Greenville at 16, Ford Madison at 15, FC Tucson at 15, Richmond at 12, and Orlando City B also at 12. So Forward Madison sitting in 7th place at the present, looking to continue to climb up the standings, and they have to go through at Tormenta this next match, which of course uh, will provide a little bit of heartache, a little bit of transgression as they need to battle their way through that, of course, difficult opponent. But we'll talk about that later in the show, and we'll hear from Daryl Shore about his opinions about that as well. Other notable news from around the soccer world involved the U.S. women's national team getting a 2-1 victory over England on Tuesday afternoon in Lyon. Goals from Alex Morgan 
and from Christian Press, enough to seal the deal, and a late offsides call end up, ends up being the difference to keep the Lionesses from overtaking the U.S. women's national team. The U.S. women's national team awaits to see who they will play. They will either take on Sweden or the Netherlands on July the 7th for the World Cup final. This is the third straight trip for the U.S. women, so great to see them back in action once again and back to the big dance once again as well. A uh, couple other quick announcements in the soccer landscape. Uh, one directly from the flock. Andrew Schmidt asked me to make this announcement. Uh, he was letting me uh, know that all of you that will be attending the next Ford Madison game to please bring books to the upcoming games. Uh, and they can be dropped off over by the Flamboyant store and at Will Call. Uh, those are going to be uh, some exciting things coming up for what he had mentioned. So if you have any books that you'd like to drop off to donate for the flock, you can do that by going to the flamboyance door and at will call. Look for Liam or look for Andrew for those drop-offs. Time now to jump into our first interview of the week. Eric Leonard is back for another episode, and we are thrilled to have him join us. Uh, he sits down with Maddie Come for a little bit more informal interview this time, which is great since Eric has been on the show before. Maddie and Eric have a great rapport, and they uh, have some fun. And uh, Maddie puts Eric in the hot seat this week as they have uh, some fast questions for each other. And Eric, I think, does a pretty good job responding to some of the heat that Maddie throws at him. So with all that being said, Maddie and Eric, let's take it away. I sat down with Eric Leonard this week to talk about his versatility on the team, his goal against Green Bay, and we answer some fan-submitted questions in our new segment, Let Me Be Really Forward, where it's basically a hot seat interview where we can ask Eric anything. And a few questions involve his teammates, so make sure to listen in for that. Here we go. Something you're known for is your versatility on the team, playing a bunch of different positions. Let's talk about that a little bit. I want to know if it's easy for you, challenging for you, if you like doing it, if it's something that you'd rather stick to one thing. Like, let's talk about that versatility. Because I think when people associate you, they think, oh, he does. He's kind of a guy of tricks of all trades. Yeah, absolutely. I think for me, I mean, obviously playing different positions can be tough, but I, I would say it's more enjoyable, um, you know, being on a team where I get to play. I, I'll go wherever the coach needs me kind of a thing and uh, I'm more of that defensive minded player so hopping in between you know a center back position and defensive mid I just kind of need to change some things up for the game or that we could practice to get ready for but ultimately in the end it's, it's a chance to be on the field and a chance to fight for my position so I, I love it mm -hmm. I love that role. Speaking of fighting you had quite the goal in Green Bay against the Voyagers they're a league two team both teams owned by Big Top uh, walk me through that goal a little bit and talk about how it was almost kind of it was a big game for Ford Madison because you guys were having a little bit of difficulty in previous games maybe it was even a reset but it did end in a draw you're also playing against people who want to be moved up into your league so they were really fighting for their chance and they wanted to be shown and wanted to almost prove that they deserve to play against and that they could keep up with you right I think the the game was a great opportunity for our club because not only for us we had people who, like you said, were fighting for a spot to come and play on our team. And I think that, you know, it was big for us to kind of get that point, even though it wasn't, you know, the result we wanted. Uh, we were still able to, you know, kind of fight. And, and the, the ball, when it uh, that got crossed to me, I was just able to kind of put in the back of the net. Josie L is, you know, one of our, our top players. So for him to put a ball on my, my foot, it's pretty easy for him. So I was lucky to just kind of tap it in. But, you know, overall, I think that game, um, we, we talked about it before in the locker room, just kind of hammering home and getting back on our winning path um, and not really letting go points. And in that game, we were able to get the draw and not lose any points, even though it was a friendly. And that's one of the cool things about all these exhibition games is that, you know, to some teams, it may seem, oh, we have an exhibition game. But for us, it's, it's another opportunity to grow as a team. And even with uh, uh, some of the bigger exhibitions coming up, it's going to be another opportunity for us to grow and to kind of climb the ladder. Mm -hmm. We talked a little bit earlier about how it's kind of we're in – the middle of the season right now you were my first interview on this podcast so tell me looking back what would you tell yourself um back then what you what you know now no I just for me I think the one thing is it's the one word that comes to my mind is, is it's just a grind I mean we've been going now for um nine to ten weeks I think almost um and it's 
it's just day in and day out of having to push yourself and fight for a position on the field and um, what you're doing to recover off the field. And I think, um, you know, telling myself just to, um, whatever team I'm on, just, you know, you gotta, you gotta have to continue to push it even when it, when it gets hard. We're laughing right now because who is po Brandon? Brandon Eaton. Is popping up behind the bushes around here. We're outside right now and he, j he won't come join our interview. But he's, a, he's a classic joke. I just see Eric looking around at different places. I never know where he is, but we're going to segue right now into a new segment called Let Me Be Really Forward. And we are going to answer fan submitted questions that we put out on Twitter and Instagram. And we said, ask anything. So anything goes. So here we go. Are you ready? I, I hope so. We'll uh, see. Okay. Number one. What was it like watching Ryan Coulter drill the butt out of a flamingo? Oh my God. Currently, Eric has his head on the table. Let me tell you, Ryan Coulter is, and I hate to admit this, but he is one of the funniest guys I have ever met. And probably one of my closer friends on the team. He's my away uh, roommate, so I get to hear his banter um, qu quite a lot. And uh, for him, when he, when he commented and actually made that, that picture of me uh, with the flamingo and him drilling, I... I did get a laugh as, as upset I was out of it. He did made me laugh, um, which is very common of Ryan. So he, he is a pretty funny guy, but Ryan, you better be careful. I'm coming with some very serious banter here. Speaking of Ryan, somebody asked, why is Ryan always on the golf course? Does he even go to practice anymore? You know, that is a great question. I don't even know what he does at practice anymore. Um, <laughs> in terms of golfing, I can tell you, if you watch his Instagram story, you only see up into the swing. So we have no idea where the ball goes. I have a lot of faith that he probably either whiffs it or it goes into the water. But, you know, like I said, that's that's Ryan Coulter, Coulter for you. Shots so. fired. <laughs> Absolutely. Moving away from Ryan, this is also... <laughs> I'll just ask it. Have you ever used your profession as a pro soccer player to pick up women? Um... It's a great question. Uh, I have not. Um, have your teammates? <laughs> no <laughs> comment. <laughs> so yes. Okay. Possibly. So no, you haven't. Official no. stance, no. No, I just feel that's kind of a little overboard. To say, hey, I'm a professional soccer player. If I was a girl, I don't really think that'd be that attractive <laughs> of a line to start with. Not the best pickup line. I've definitely thought it, but okay. I have not used it. Confirmed. All right. So someone said on your show, so on Let Me Be Forward, Brian Beeman claimed the hashtag swag like Beeman. Does he actually have swag? Absolutely not. <laughs> Absolutely not. But I'll give him the, uh, the the brain for thinking of the hashtag. But come on, Brian, I'm going to challenge you. To, you got to do better than that. Second to last question. Who's the biggest diva on the team? <sighs> biggest diva? Wow. Um, he's probably my best friend on the team but I'm gonna have to say Brandon Eaton he you know he he has very big mood swings when we play cards we play a game called 12 when we go on the road trip and he can be the happiest guy or in the worst mood ever um yeah I'm gonna have to go with him for sure last question but the most controversial one where's Jeff that is a great question um like when we were told uh you know he would no longer be with us we weren't really told any of the details but you know, obviously, all of us, I know we hope for the best for him and that he gets on the team somewhere. He's a great player, and you know, I'm sure he'll find a home somewhere soon. Mm -hmm. Well, on that note, that's all the questions we have for Hot Seat. So thanks for sitting And there. Hopefully it wasn't too torturous, but we're probably going to continue this segment. So anybody who has questions, feel free to reach out to us. If you have any more questions for Eric, let me know, and I'm sure that I will get them to him soon. Time now for our weekly conversation with Forward Madison FC head coach Daryl Shore, coming off the back of a 1-1 draw north of the border against TFC2, but some big things to talk about, especially the performance of Danny Tenori, which we'll get into in just a minute, but as always, welcome back to the show, Coach. Baxter, as always, thanks for having me. Absolutely, Coach. It's a pleasure to have you. Welcome back from Canada. Did you, did you enjoy your trip up north? Yeah. I mean, Toronto's a nice city. Uh, we went to there, so we had a little... A little bit of a tough day on Thursday, but all in all, to get up there and uh, 
uh, you know, come out of there with a point, I think uh, overall we'd say we're pleased. Absolutely. And uh, that one point that you got coming off the back of a goal from, uh, let's be honest, a, a great story that we've seen. We talked about him a couple of weeks ago, Danny Tenorio getting that first official goal in USL League One. Uh, talk about that moment briefly when he was able to, obviously, right place, right time to get that goal, but uh, kind of a special moment for him and for the club. Yeah, I mean, he's worked so hard to, to get back from this knee injury that he had at the beginning of the year. And, and so for him to start getting some minutes uh, in a few of the games before and now to come in and, and to be fair, should have had a goal right before that. The goalkeeper makes a, a good save. But mm. uh, just for him to be in the right time at the right right place was, uh, I think, a great moment for him because, uh, again, it's been a long been a long uh, road for him getting hurt you know three days into preseason and having to watch all the guys go through everything so really excited that he was able to come in and, and affect the game and uh, obviously you know makes the coaching staff look good when a player comes in and does that exactly right you can definitely uh, nod to the rest of the players and be like yep i meant to do that you know it's always when the subs work in your favor you're the hero right uh, usually, usually. <laughs> so just, uh, again, just good for him to get on the score sheet, but also good for us to know that we've got guys now that can come off the bench and contribute to our group, which I think is important for our starters to know that they can give it everything they've got knowing, uh, when they do have to come out of the game, uh, we've got guys that can step in and score goals for us. Exactly right. And getting that uh, that little insurgence of Danny, obviously, certainly is going to be a valuable piece. Moving forward, you have two big games coming up the next couple of days. You'll have Tormenta on Saturday and then Lansing Ignite that following Tuesday. Give me a brief rundown. Obviously, there's a lot of points at stake. You try to continue to keep climbing up the table. Tormenta, uh, one of the top two teams in the league right now, of course. Very talented, but somebody that you've mentioned to me in the past is also very beatable. Yeah, I mean, obviously they're they're very good at home. Uh, they have eight eight clean sheets, so uh, it's a team that doesn't give up a lot of goals. But at the same time, we feel like we've got to go in there and, and create chances, and at some point their wall has to break. Um, so uh, felt like the game here at, at home, uh, we were a little bit uh, unlucky not to get the result here, and, and credit to them, they – stuck with their game plan and got the goal and made it hard for us. So uh, these next two games, Tormenta and Lansing, uh, we view as games that we have to go and get points out of. And, and, uh, you know, we know they're tough games, but at the same time, we also feel like we're a tough opponent for teams and they've got to be thinking the same thing, that that we're going to come in there and not just lay down and, and give them points. Exactly right. Uh, I want to talk briefly about the two new loan players that just came in that were announced. Uh, you've got Louis Bennett and Oliver White joining from Memphis 901. Uh, you made some obviously public comments about them that you're excited, but uh, on this format, I'd love to hear about what you think both those players are going to bring to the Mingo's offense. Yeah, I mean, you know, they jumped right into training, and, and I think right away you can see Oliver uh, in some of our games scored a couple goals in our training games. Uh, just a guy that has a knack for the goal and, and can run behind defenses, but also puts himself in, in good spots. So uh, we feel like it gives us a, another option of somebody who can come in, whether it's off the bench or starting and affect the game uh, with his pace and also with his ability to score goals in, in and around the box. Uh, you know, Louis is, uh, Louis, I think it's going to be fun for the fans to watch. He's, he's a creative midfielder. He sees the field really well. Um, he's a good passer, um, but he also has a nose for the goal. And so we're, we're pretty excited about what he's going to add to our midfield. And, and we feel like uh, right now we've got a lot of guys that are, that are clicking, uh, in the midfield. So to be able to add another guy, uh, to that group uh, just gives us more quality on the field, uh, both in training and, and in games. So whenever you can add two players that we feel can affect the team in a positive way, I think it's a, it's a great move for our club. And, and again, it, it just shows where our ownership group is and, and where we are as a club of, of not just being satisfied with where we are in the table, but how can we, make our team better can we go out and find a couple of pieces to to our roster that can help uh push us over the top as we try to 
continue to climb the table and, and get ourselves into the top four. So really excited about both of them joining us. And, um, you know, we have a great relationship, or I have a great relationship with the coach down in Memphis, Tim Mulqueen. Uh, we go back a long time. So just to be able to work with them and, and their their uh, efforts uh, shouldn't go unnoticed because they've done a great job of getting those players to us. And, and both players, you know, in talking with them are, are excited to be here because they know that this is an opportunity to, to get minutes and, and help us uh, reach our goals. And then on Louis' end as well, it's just great to have another Wisconsin – uh, player uh, with Wisconsin ties uh, on our team. And so I know his father is very excited. His his father's the head coach at Marquette for yep. those that don't know. And, um, you know, when we played Marquette in the preseason, his father kind of in tongue in cheek uh, kind of said to me, you guys need a, another left side of midfielder. And, <laughs> you know, I just joked with him and said, yeah, one of these days we might look into that. So to be able to, to add another Wisconsin native to our roster, I think is just a, another statement for our club and, and what we're trying to do here. Absolutely, absolutely. Real fast before we let you go, Coach, I'd be remiss if I didn't ask you, and I know there's only so much you can say, but the dismissal of Jeff Mashad, I'd like to just get your statement about that and um, what the little bit that you can share about it, please. Yeah, I mean, you know, Jeff's a, a, a fantastic person and a fantastic player, and uh, unfortunately there were some team rules that were violated, and, and we just felt like in the best interest of both parties, it was best uh, to mutually part ways. And so we'll leave it at that. Uh, Jeff's got a bright future and, and um, you know, it's not something that we're proud that we had to do, but I think both parties realized that this was in the best interest of both. And, and so we made the decision and we move on. Fair enough. And final question from you. I was just curious to, uh, to step away from the team for a second, your reaction to how the U S men's national team has been playing in the gold cup. Yeah, I mean, listen, both our, our, our national teams, our women, how, you know, how great is that, that they're, they're doing as well as they, they have, and obviously most of us expect that. But at the same time, if you listen to the banter now between England and, and our, our group, you know, about the, the, the rest of the world catching up to us, it's still a matter of them. Uh, they still need to catch us and be a tough game for the U.S. against England, but hopefully they'll, they'll come in and do that. Uh, so it's good to see that on our women's side. And then our men's side is um, – it's great. I mean, it's great to see a lot of young players, but then at the same time to see some of our veteran guys uh, be able to help uh, mold some of these young guys. And, and um, you know, I know a lot of people question why guys like Michael Bradley um, and some of these guys are still on the roster. And I think, again – players like Michael prove their worth to our group. And so mm -hmm. now you have the young guys like Weston McKenney and Christian Pulisic, who everybody knows about, but um, you know, just these guys and, and how well they're doing. And Greg is a, a, a fantastic coach. And obviously he had success uh, in the league with Columbus and um, he's put together a, a, a great staff. And, and I think that they're trying to figure out a way for our, our national team to play, but, uh, you know, the one thing I don't think our fans realize, and this is fans across the, the world or the country, is uh, CONCACAF is not as it's not as much of a doormat as people mm -hmm. once thought it was. I mean, it's there's true. a lot of quality, quality teams. And the one thing I said, you know, back when we didn't qualify for the World Cup to people is if you look at the Panamanian team and the Costa Rican teams that did qualify ahead of us, a lot of those players are playing in our domestic league in MLS and, and, and in, in top European leagues, the goalkeeper for Costa Rica is the starting goalkeeper for Real Madrid. So right. it's not now that CONCACAF is, is just a doormat. CONCACAF is a, it's a tough, tough um, um, region and the teams are getting better. And, and so now you take a team uh, like Curacao who nobody's ever heard of, but they go out and obviously have a game plan and, and made it tough for our guys. But uh, again, so now you have a group where we can get results, um, and those are good things. This next game against Jamaica will be difficult, and then if we get by that, as as always, we we are assuming Mexico is going to advance and should be a fun final. But they they've got to get through the semifinal first. But it's just fun to see uh, you know our, our national team doing well and, and and being reinvigorated by by what's going on there. Absolutely. Well, coach, we appreciate the time, sir. You enjoy the rest of your day, and we'll talk to you again next week. Okay, great. Thanks, Baxter.
Time now for the weekly supporters section where we bring in someone that is thoroughly involved in the club from a supporter's side to give us their reactions, thoughts, and comments. Well, we've had this man on the show before. He is the founder of The Flock. It's Andrew Schmidt. He joined us back in Milwaukee a couple weeks ago, and now he's back on the line with us today. Andrew, welcome back to the show, sir. Oh, thank you, Baxter. It was a pleasure to be on. It's always a pleasure to chat with you, and uh, we had a lot of fun in Milwaukee, didn't we? Yeah, we had a good time. Um, it was a fun space. Uh, thanks again to uh, to Mo Crosby for having us out there. It was a great time. Absolutely, yeah. If you uh, haven't been to the Hive down in the Milwaukee downtown area, please go and do so. A lot of cool stuff down there for them. But uh, let's talk about it. You have, uh, you were on a field trip recently, Andrew. You got to go to the Wonder Wall in Minnesota at Allianz Field. Tell me about what the heck that was like, because it looked incredible. Uh, yeah, it was a lot of fun. Um, I mean, I'd, I'd gone a couple of times to see Minnesota United play at TCF. Um, and that was, I mean, that was great, too. But uh, that club and, and, their, and their amazing supporter base, having their own stadium and having it built specifically for them, um, it was just a, a really sweet thing to be able to see in person. Um, it's my first time. Uh, our drummers got invited to to play in Thunderwall, which is their their drum line, their drum section. And oh wow! Um, so that that was a ton of fun in and of itself. Um, like we met up. So it was me and uh, Steve Shaw, who's like one of like if not our main main drummer at this point in uh, in the flock end, but. Um, we both brought drums up and and joined them for the entire game, and it was just it was a lot of fun. Um, they have, <laughs> I mean, they're so they're planning on coming down to Madison for the the game on August 10th, and uh, specifically like they're bringing they're like oh you know Rob uh, who's amazing super nice guy, um, he's the guy that kind of heads things up from their drummer drumming perspective. Um, said oh you know mind if we bring six bass drums down. And I was like, "Oh yeah, that's fine. We we have three, so yeah, yeah. Why not? <laughs> we'll triple our size, and Absolutely. you know, for one match, it'll be a good time." Um, no, I mean, it, it it's true what they say. You know, I mean, the, there there really is no community like the community around soccer, and from specifically from a uh, supporters' perspective. Um, <clears throat> so we went up to the cities uh, primarily for this game wasn't originally to be a part of their drum line was but it was really partially a you know learning experience from our perspective uh but also just a chance to reconnect with some old friends i've got uh uh friends up there that i've known for a few years now um through soccer supporting stuff in general but uh to see what groups like dark clouds and true north lead and dark glitterati have done for you know from a support perspective for their club is, was really cool um we got to go to true north elites tailgate at dual citizen which is a, a, a brewery in st paul um they've got some excellent beers it was cool just to be able to sit around and talk and like kind of soak up a little bit of their culture um true north elite is known for being a little bit more rowdy as far as minnesota united supporters are going <laughs> um they have a lot of young people. They have a lot of people that are, you know, not sort of your your target, I guess, like your usual demographic for sure. soccer supporters. Um, but they also have uh, a charitable and volunteerism arm of their organization called Keepers of the North, and they do a ton of volunteer work and fundraising for various causes around their city. Um, so that was really cool to be able to, like, have kind of a meeting of the minds, so to speak, on a lot of different topics. Because um, as we know, I mean, soccer supporter culture extends itself to far more than just showing up on match day. It's a lot of community activism and fundraising. And, exactly. Um, uh, yeah, so it, it's just, it's nice to be able to share ideas. I think, you know, as time progresses, I mean, obviously it's our first season, so we're just trying to find our feet with a lot of this stuff. But um, even just in this first season, I think, you know, the it's easy, especially when you're building something like this, to kind of once you figure out something that works, to sit back for a little bit and like enjoy being comfortable for a little while. But that's one of the things that we're kind of focused on, at least from a leadership perspective, is to like make sure that we're constantly shaking things up and trying new things and trying different things to see what resonates with the community at large. 
Um, well, I was going to say, and just to jump into the amount of fans that keep showing up to the home games, I mean, just even talk about the Minnesota United game. You had over 4,800 people show up to that game. So even if you're trying to progressively grow, the fans are saying, oh, you really want to just do it slowly, huh? We're going to really keep you on your toes, Andrew. Right, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> I mean, that's that's been a lot of fun in and of itself. But, I mean, just even talking logistically, we've had – we're trying all kinds of different stuff on match days, uh, even just with the way that we set up the section, where we put the capo stands, where the drummers are located. I mean, we came back from Minnesota with a, 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 a huge list of ideas and things to try and implement, stuff that's worked for them, lessons they've learned. Um, I mean, we've been, yeah, we've been trying to like not reinvent the wheel <laughs> when it yeah. comes to this kind of stuff, you know, figure out what works for other clubs. See how we can maybe scale down for what we're what we're doing in Madison. Um, exactly right. I feel like it's working pretty okay so far. It's just you know, it's definitely our match days in Madison. Every Stevens has a very like it, it feels like a party, which I think is a lot of is a lot of fun and it's intoxicating in in and of itself. Um, just to be a part of this thing where everybody's just like super like just feeling the positivity and the energy and. Um, we might try to put a little bit of focus and a little bit of, of uh, guardrails around some of that stuff just to make it more efficient and less mm-hmm. of a time of a time commitment. Because right now, we've got a small handful of people doing a lot of the heavy lifting. Right. So hopefully that's something that, as, as the rest of the season progresses, I mean, we're almost halfway done. Yeah. Um, but as the rest of the season progresses, that... You know, we we have more people showing up and really taking part and taking ownership over a lot of the stuff that goes down on match day. That's the idea: is that eventually there's traditions in place that anybody can grab a hold of and run with. Exactly right, and I think that's the cool part to see about it: is that this is a community and it is continuing to grow. And I think that is, as you mentioned, an testament to the fans that are showing up and also those core people. And I, I want to ask before I let you run, Andrew, just because I know we don't have a ton of time today, um, what some of the upcoming opportunities are for people to get involved with the flock or different things that various sub-supporter groups might be doing that fans can get involved in. I know you had a big thing for Pride Month, obviously, but uh, what's another big thing that might be coming up here as we get into the middle and end of summer? Yeah, so... Um, just to like recap, I guess uh, very quickly of like what kind of stuff we've done so far in different events and stuff that we've been about. So we have watch parties coming up for all of the away games. So if people check out our website, it's just FWD flock, like forward flock.com. There's an events page on there that lists like when and where we'll be places. Um, there's also like a subscribable Google, Google calendar. If people just want to like get that stuff added to their Google calendar, so they don't have to check it all the time. Fantastic. Um, but we do we do like fifty fifty raffles and um, <clears throat> all kinds of like donating donating opportunities on a mass way viewing. So far this season, we've raised over eight thousand dollars from donations, raffles, and partner proceeds. Wow. Uh, and pride merch sales. Our goal for this season was ten thousand dollars, and we're not even halfway through the season and almost hitting that. So it's a huge testament to the amount of work that people like Liam and Scott do from our side as far as organizing organizing that stuff, but also just in the the you know the true showing that we've had from the community here in Madison and 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 at large uh, as far as people showing up and being generous. Um, so we're extremely thankful and extremely proud of that so far. Um, we've got 200 hours in of volunteering, uh, from volunteering to, you know, line ref at Wisconsin Warriors, the Power Soccer, the Spin Kick, click, spin kick Classic, their tournament that they had. Um, we've done park cleanups, uh, volunteering at River Food Pantry. So there's a big need, actually, that uh, we're working out upcoming dates for that. Well, as always, Andrew, a big thank you for the time, and uh, we look forward to having you back on the show again in the future. And if people obviously want to get involved, they can check out The Flock on social media. Time now for The Loon Report, your weekly look inside Forward Madison Partner Club, Minnesota United. Well, the story in MLS this past week did center around Minnesota United, and it has to do with their 7-1 drubbing of FC Cincinnati. The 
people in orange and blue went from eh to bleh, in a real fast moment, honestly, because FC Cincinnati now with a negative 27 goal differential, 313 and 2 on the season. And my gosh, this is just pathetic, let's be honest. But whoa boy, what a win for Minnesota United. They moved to 7 7 and 3, 4 1 and 3 at home this season. And who? Who else should show up and get a goal and an assist? Mason Toy, of course. Did you see his goal? Oh, my Lord. I honestly am thrilled to finally be getting proven wrong about this player because he was fun to watch. He was electric. He was engaged. And where the heck was that play when he was with forward Madison? Am I right? Is anybody else sitting here going, okay, that's great that you're doing that for Minnesota United. Good for you. Your career is growing. But come on, man. We could have used you early in the season. But I'm over it. It's fine. Either way, forward Madison, uh, I'm sure, is thrilled to know that Mason Toy spent some time with them and hopefully will take a little bit of credit for him getting back into the swing of things as he is appearing to be a up-and-comer for Minnesota United. Taylor Twelman even said it on the broadcast, too. He said, I am excited to see where this young guy goes in the next 6 to 12 months for Minnesota United. The answer, at least at this exact moment, is only going up, honestly. Minnesota United, where are they now? Sixth place in the Western Conference, 24 points. Just two points behind fourth place FC Dallas, one point behind the San Jose Earthquakes. A lot of soccer still to be played, of course, in this MLS season, but Minnesota will look to keep their run at home continuing as they take on San Jose today. Uh, That's a 7 p.m. game at Allianz Field. So if you're in that area, why not swing over and uh, go catch some Minnesota United soccer? That's this week's edition of the Loon Report, your weekly look inside Ford Madison Partner Club, Minnesota United. Recapping the 1-1 draw against Toronto FC2. I didn't call him Toronto City this time. I finally got it right. TFC2, uh, a great draw for the Mingos as they were able to go into Toronto, cause a little disturbance, and come away with one point. At this point, any points are valuable for forward Madison. So the fact that they were able to go into Toronto on the road first time and get a one-point result, still something to be proud of. Looking at the stats, you look at the way the game is broken down. That is uh, a pretty evenly matched game, honestly. 51 to 48% was the uh, possession stats. Pretty close on teetering on being a 51-49%, honestly. Uh, You look at the aerial duels, 56% won by Forward Madison. Uh, The interceptions, the offsides, 11 offsides calls for Forward Madison. That screams that this is something that Ford Madison was gunning to win this game. But, man, 11 times getting called offsides, certainly a little bit of a concern. You look at the substitutes for the Mingos as well. Uh, Hiro Toyama came in in the 63rd, Sean Russell in the 89th, and Danny Tenorio in the 81st. And then he scores, or in the 75th, rather, he scores in the 81st. But uh, this week on Twitter, a lot of people have talked about Brandon Eaton. They've been very impressed with his play and contributing the success of Don Smart to Brandon Eaton. The progression of the match, it was a goal in the 45th minute by Peruza for TFC2. And then, like I mentioned, the 81st minute by Danny Tenorio. The standings, as we hit on the top of the match, uh, certainly shaken up just a little bit. A lot to look at, a lot to think about. If there's anything that I would have changed in this game, my honest reaction is not really. No, uh, this was a, a good starting 11 by forward Madison. It's good to see that uh, we are starting to get more consistency, and we see Wyatt Olmsberg back at the center back spot, along with Connor Tobin, Carter Manley also at the right wing, and then Christian Diaz at the left. That's a solid back four that I think, as long as uh, Minnesota United doesn't come and recall any of their players, uh, will be the consistent back four for the Madison Mingos moving forward. You might see Sean Russell sneak in there as well from time to time, as we saw him obviously as that substitute, but at this point, that back line is going to be kind of what I think we'll see the remainder of the season, barring any injuries or call-ups. As far as the new players, as we saw that Coach Shore mentioned, uh, look for them to be substitutes. Uh, I still think that starting forward spot is still very open. J.C. Banks uh, occupying it right now, but we've seen a lot of different players go through there. Paulo Jr. has occupied it. We've seen Jose El Nunez, uh, you know, obviously Mason Toy. 
it just kind of is this revolving door of not one true striker yet that could take it over. So keep an eye on what that looks like for the next couple of weeks and see how these new players transition in to the team as well. Uh, and then, of course, uh, Coach Shore talking about the upcoming match against Tormenta. It will bring a lot uh, for Ford Madison. 7 p.m. kickoff on Saturday down in South Georgia. Tormenta has not lost at home this season. They are 5-0-1 uh, at home this season. They have done a great and impressive job of defending the home palace, as it were. Uh, they are coming off a 1-0 victory against the Richmond Kickers. Players to watch for Tormenta. Keep these names at the tip-top of your stat sheets as you're calling them out. Uh, three players with three goals on the season, William Connor Antley, Alex Morrell, and Marco Micheletto all have three goals on the season. Who are the guys dishing out the balls? Well, William Connor Antley's got three, and Alex Morrell has two, and so does Marco Micheletto. So uh, pretty much the three players you're going to want to watch are Antley, Morrell, and Micheletto. They're going to be the ones that are going to be creating the chances and ultimately creating havoc for the Mingos on the back line. Outside of that, score prediction, I see Tormenta getting the 2-1 victory this this game, honestly. I think Madison will push them, but I think Tormenta is still just a little too good at home. The Let Me Be Forward Twitter DMs and mentions this week was probably my favorite thing that has ever happened in the history of the show. And here is what I can say. So we asked the question this week, and uh, we said um, the question that we were asking is, you know, if there is, uh, what? let's see, I can get the official. Uh, we said, pie in the sky, what one retired player and what one current player would you love to see play on forward Madison? Just kind of asking the general question. And uh, you guys certainly did not disappoint with the reaction. So here are some of my favorites. Tater Tottenham, first of all, great username, says Brett Favre and Messi. I love it. Chet, uh, Chet Pancakes said Didier Drogba and Antoine Griezmann. Um, I answered David Beckham and Carlos Vela. Um, Flor Mingos said, um, what did Flor Mingos say? He said Kaká and Peter Crouch. That's a good, good duel right there. Uh, the English Flamingo said Nedved and Ramos. I like that. The Voyagers said Brian Kamler. That's their head coach for those that don't know. And then, um, let's see here. The next ones that we had, um, Mike McGee, the f- former LA Galaxy Chicago fireman, just sent a picture of him in a forward Madison jersey. And that started a whole nother can of worms, honestly, um, starting the potential rumors. Uh, Ian said, I will die if we can get that CF97 to forward Madison connection. Please, Mike, you sure look fit enough. He does. Mike McGee looks real good. Forward Madison France said, Javier Zanetti and Christian Pulisic. That'd be a fun one. Um, Ian also said Miroslav Klose and Trent Alexander-Arnold. Just imagine those killer crosses coming into one of the best headers the game ever saw. Anyone think Zlatan would look amazing in that pink kit? Uh, yes, yes, I do. I think Zlatan would be incredible. Uh, we tried to get confirmation on whether or not there would be this potential for a Mike McGee to forward Madison option. Who knows if that's actually going to happen or not. But hey, if Peter Wilt is in charge... Who knows what is possible because we are fully on board with it. Uh, Peter Wilt sending a tweet this week. He said, at Mike McGee 18, looks good on you, but given your multi-positional abilities, we should have put you in a Ford Madison goalkeeper jersey as well. If you'd like to retire as a Flamingo, let us know. We can make it happen. And Twitter lost their minds once that happened. So Esther, Bruce, Flamingos, Adrian, Sisyon, Everybody was commenting, saying, yes, please make that happen. Esther had a great one. She said, I have no idea what it means to retire as a Flamingo, but I want that. So, uh, yeah, I hope that for everybody's sake that ends up happening. But who knows if it does. But, man, oh, man, great comments this week, guys. Thank you for that. Uh, I thoroughly enjoyed the question and response this week. Uh, Yeah, I still stand behind my, my two, though. Uh, I think that we could have a lot of fun with David Beckham and Carlos Vela. But anyway, that's all the good stuff that I've got in store for you today. Uh, Thank you for listening. A big thanks to Derek Leonard. Big thanks to 
Daryl Shore and Andrew Schmidt for being on the program this week. The show is available for you on Apple Podcasts. Thanks to Public House Media. Great folks over there. Check them out. Publichousemedia.org is the website or find them on their social media channel. Speaking of social media, we're on social media. I am at Baxter Colburn. You can find Maddie at Maddie Cum. And uh, you can find the show at Let Me Be Forward. A big thanks to you listening in. I hope you had fun. Let's get a win this weekend against Tormenta. And we'll see you next time on Let Me Be Forward. 